Hey guys, this is Elise. I'm a licensed professional counselor and wellness coach. Welcome back to COVID-19 Mental Health Chats. The topic of this video is about how to structure your mindset about the ebbs and flows of productivity, work, and contribution. I will also offer three practical steps that you can take to ground yourself when you feel anxiety or unrest about the ebb in your flow of life right now and how to better understand yourself to reorient yourself optimally. This video is designed for everyone. The practical steps that I provide in this video are simple and easy to affect immediately. The first step is to reframe your mind about times when you're experiencing an ebb. The first step is to identify what the negative feelings you are having are, by name, and the potential reasons for them. There are so many that are unique to each person's experience, and I won't be able to cover all of them in exhaustion in this video. But some examples that I can use for the purpose of this conversation as examples um, may include some of the following. Please use the suggestions as it most suits you and your particular experience. It may seem particularly boring with less external stimulation in your life. You may feel miserable about your decreased output of production. You may have a fear of missing out, or you may even feel punished for no reason. Those feelings may result from a one track frame of mind that requires you to always be doing something with somebody, or at least on your own. That mindset does not allow you to rest or relax without a nagging voice of guilt. Let me provide a little story as a metaphor for an alternative. My grandfather was born around 1931 in the year of the Lamb. He served in the Korean War and helped rebuild Korea after the World Wars as a pastor and community leader. He served as a pastor of a Korean Presbyterian church faithfully in the city of Daegu, the same church for over 40 years before training the next pastors to come in and for himself to retire. He is still at that same church as a member. That church has seen very little drama and no political turmoil internally. He and my grandmother have a reputation for peace and joy. It takes wisdom and grace to lead a church peacefully through one's entire career, adult life, and through old age. When I was a small child, I was sick one time, and I was tired of being sick. I was more tired of being stuck indoors and unable to even go out to the backyard. I complained and I complained, and my mother shared a little memory she had she said when she was sick as a child and was complaining the same way I was doing, her father, who was my grandfather, told her, God is giving you a gift with this sickness. I asked my mom, what does that mean? Because I don't understand. This is not a gift that I wanted and I was happy to return the gift. She smiled and said that grandpa explained, this is God's way to force you to rest. So I share this personal story because we as a global society are being forced to rest in many ways. While frontline workers are either preparing to work at a surge or are working at a surge or are simply helping the rest of us eat and survive by carrying and driving the items and services that we need to survive each day. When you have an opportunity to rest, it is so important to use it well. You don't know when the next time you'll get to rest your head without any other thought besides how to rest well may be. This is an opportunity to develop yourself internally and give some gentle care to your inner resources and inner resilience. It's an opportunity to get to know yourself better. It's an opportunity to fall in love with your spouse or partner again and again. It's an opportunity to become creative, and learn new skills or tap into some hobbies that you didn't really have time for in the past. It is an opportunity to physically also do nothing, to be still, to appreciate stillness, to appreciate 
being and to practice gratitude in your interior life. It's also a great time to explore some of the pieces of your worldview. These are just a few suggestions. I'm sure with the collective genius, many of you may have really great ideas of how to rest well also, and I'm interested in hearing your ideas. The second thing I want to suggest is that if you are in a position to rest, to stay still, this is also a great opportunity to look around and see what needs to be tended in your immediate personal radius. It may be as simple as pulling the weeds out of your own lawn or looking across the street and noticing that your retired and or elderly neighbor and or a family with lots of young children needs their lawn mowed. Be neighborly and help out of goodwill. Who knows? Somebody who lives near your parents or grandparents may be paying it forward as well to mow their lawn or bring groceries to them. You don't have to wait for someone else to be a role model. You can become a role model right now. If you are connecting online, there are lots of opportunities to create safe spaces or to join self spaces for self care and to help others self care. If you're looking for a place to join for safe care with privacy and some guidance, uh, I'm, I'm hosting a space, a space on Facebook. It's www.facebook.com slash groups slash coronavirus period self care period mental health slash and you're welcome to join if you are aware of community voices who are not being heard you can collect their stories by phone and the internet and bring them to your local representatives through email or through phone who can make a bigger change and that change can start with you so at this point in our chat, we are going to turn to the three practical and easy to implement on your own steps to calm yourself, to decrease your bodily sensations of anxiety or disturbance, as well as a tip on how to better understand yourself so that you can pivot your reactions optimally given our circumstances. So if you're finding yourself feeling anxiousness or disturbance in your body about having to stay still, and patient during self-quarantining and limited public movement, I would like to introduce a resource based on aromas or smell. Aromas go directly to your limbic system of the brain and is ideal for grounding in the present. You're going to want to prepare a little bit for this first exercise. You'll need to prepare an aroma that can be mobile with you that you like. Um, You'll also want a sheet of paper or a journal page and a writing utensil. Then you'll also want to find a quiet time or as well as a safe open space that you can that you can move somewhat in to do this exercise for grounding yourself and calming your senses. Some examples of aromas and uh, sources of aromas that you may have already are um, a coffee stick, candy, play-doh, fruit, a room freshener, a candle, or hand lotion. So let's get started. Now that you have all of your materials, first, smell the aroma that you chose. When you smell that aroma, what do you notice? You may be noticing feelings, positive emotions, positive thoughts that come up. Jot those down on a piece of paper or the special journal page that you've prepared. You'll want to keep this handy for the rest of the exercise. Then to enhance the positive feelings and sensations, keep taking in that smell, that aroma. Focus on those first positive feelings, emotions, and thoughts that you had. Notice it and go with it. Tell yourself more. Explore those positive emotions, sensations, and thoughts and write them all down. Then. Take a little walk in your space while rereading the words and phrases you wrote on your page again and again and again. Walk around, meander, or if you don't really feel safe about reading your words while smelling something and walking, then stay in a sitting position and tap your toes in the rhythm that you would normally take to walk. Left, right, left, right, as you read your words and smell the aroma. 
This helps download the written words of your thoughts, emotions, feelings with the positive aroma and sensations that arise. It helps crystallize it together for your sensorial frame of reference. You can use this aroma resource paired with the associated feelings, memories, thoughts that are positive to help ground yourself in the present moment. A second skill is the 54321 exercise to help ground yourself in the present. You use the five senses for this exercise and you don't have to memorize the order of them. Notice five things you see and name them. Then four things that you can feel as textures around you, fabrics, objects, your own skin, your hair, etc. Three things that you can hear. It might be in your immediate interior space. It might be the birds chirping outside. Two things that you can smell. One thing that you can taste. Then notice the shift in your body or in your feelings or your thoughts compared to before you started the 54321 exercise. You don't have to memorize which sense is being used at each step. You can always switch things up too. So the next time you might do five things you can taste, four things you can hear, three things you can see, two things you can smell, one thing you can touch and it's texture, etc. The third and last resource that I would like to recommend in this video is tied to learning more about yourself and maybe also those who you are quarantining with to communicate more effectively and help each other get each other's needs understood and then met. You may begin by taking a personality psychometric test like the Enneagram or Myers-Briggs, which is also known as the MBTI. The MBTI and other personality psychometric text, tests tend to have um, poor reliability, which means you can have varying results. Um, but what's unique about the Enneagram that I found is that its creators built in the expectation for varying results by stating that over a lifetime, someone who develops well will have all the different Enneagram personality types at different points in their life as they increase and strengthen their weak points and continue with their existing strengths. The helpful thing about these psychometric tests is that, and the way that you can use it in a beneficial way, is that you can recognize some patterns of perspective, which is the mental aspect, and some driving motivations for a person who typifies with the personality type that you score, and that's the emotional aspect, it, and the behavioral aspect too. It helps you to take objective steps towards progressing in a way that you want by understanding your strengths and limitations with words in the time that you take it. Naming your experiences and how you perceive it can help to tame your emotions tied to the process, as well as balancing out your perspective. And that can help increase your peace of mind. So with that, we have the end of our video chat for self-care and mental health. Please comment, like, subscribe, connect with me here, and I will continue trying to share helpful and practical resources for you. See you next time.